uh, for those of you just joining us on um, Zoom, go ahead and use um, the chat feature right in the center of your Zoom toolbar. If you're joining us on Facebook, we want you to go ahead and use the comment section um, so that you can get um, any of your questions answered, uh, use those two features. We're gonna have James uh, kind of talk about uh, Photoshop here and setting up your files uh, for printing with Final Works. So with that, let me go ahead and put James over as our host and he will share his screen and, um, and start that. Okay, thank you, Melissa. So uh, thank you all for uh, attending, uh, what is this, our second Final Works Zoom uh, meeting and I think we've had a handful of geo gallery meetings that Melissa has hosted. Um, so the idea behind these uh, Zoom meetings and uh, it is to really help educate uh, our our customers, uh, answer some of the questions that that are are asked of us a lot, and help them you know with their image files so that they're the when they print those files that the, the quality of the prints look a lot better. Um, uh, most of uh, the images that, that we see on a daily basis look fantastic. And sometimes uh, though they do require a little tweaking or there could be something that a person could do a little bit better uh, to, to bring out certain tones or to just to make the print look a, a lot nicer. Uh, and so that's what um, my goal with the session is to help you all with that. And I am guessing that a lot of the information that I, that I uh, if, if y'all have uh, any experience with a program like Photoshop, that, well, I'll say that some of the information will probably, you know, you, you, you may know, but I'm hoping that uh, you'll also walk away with some new information, some information that will help you. Um, so um, just a quick introduction uh, about me. Uh, I am one of the founders of Finer Works. Um, uh, by no means uh, am I a, any kind of uh, printing guru or Photoshop guru. I, I, I just have a lot of experience in those areas. And so I'm willing to try to impart upon, you know, some of that knowledge that I've acquired over the years and impart upon that to you. And, and hopefully it will, will help you guys. So uh, again, welcome. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, we're going to touch on several topics and well, a list of topics. And I, I, we shared that in our newsletter earlier today, what those topics would cover, but I'm gonna just kind of run down those real quick. And we're gonna, we're gonna go to eight, eight o'clock um, roughly. We, if we go over a few minutes, you know, that, uh, we'll try not to, but uh, we'll, we'll try to stop about eight o'clock. And I think we should be able to get everything in uh, in that time frame. Uh, and uh, during uh, there'll be times where Melissa will interject some questions that she gets from the users, and and I'll try to answer those to the best that I can. Um, let me pull up my topics here real quick. So uh, one of the things we're gonna talk about is uh, just real quick, uh, just because it does have a bearing in the print quality uh, is a JPEG versus TIFF versus other formats. Um, it doesn't have, you know, it's, it, it really is not Photoshop centric that topic, but I think it's important that, that we, we start off with explaining what the differences are. Um, then we're going to talk about finding your image size and resolution and Photoshop is a great tool for that because it, you can really see how image size and uh, pixels per inch uh, relate with each other or, or how they how how one is related to the other and so we'll, we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about using the ruler tool for reference purposes uh, the ruler tool is a uh, a tool that a lot of people don't use to their advantage when it comes to uh, uh, reviewing their image file in Photoshop because it can be used to preview your print your your image at print scale on your computer and I'll explain to you how you can do that and then we'll uh, talk about 
adjusting your image size, you know, either increasing or decreasing it. And one, some of the things that you want to do when you're, you're making those size changes. Uh, we're going to talk about the importance of flattening layers or to save to JPEG, uh, one or the other, and why this is important when preparing your image for print uh, with finer works. Um, and then uh, saving a print copy of the image, uh, we'll talk about that, and I'll explain exactly what that is uh, soon as well. And then uh, one of my favorite topics is cropping or fitting images to your print size. And this is where a lot of people uh, have trouble. It, it's not very difficult, but it's hard to explain to people over the phone. And I know our customer service staff are, are uh, always on the phone with people explaining cropping or fitting images within a certain uh, aspect ratio. And it's hard to do that over the phone, but I think with some examples that we can see in Photoshop, it'll be clear to those that, that uh, might have some questions. And then we're gonna talk about adding a custom margin space. I call those embedded margins. Uh, you might think of them as borders. Um, I think of borders as something that goes outside of the printed image area, uh, whereas I call a margin or a custom margin space something that you embed within that image. And I'll show you the difference there. And then, uh, Selecting the preferred color space, what we at Final Works prefer. Different print labs pref you know, prefer you supply images with different color spaces, and, and we'll talk about what, what we like to see, what works best with our uh, workflow. And then uh, checking uh, if an image is too dark or too bright. Uh, we'll talk about our calibration print, safe zones and bleed, and photographing artwork, uh, editing distortion. Now it's a lot of information, so I uh, now that I've gone over them all, I'm, I'm hoping we can cover them all. I think we can, but I'll, I'll try to move relatively fast, but uh, not too fast that I lose any of y'all. And if I do, uh, raise your hand or uh, let Melissa know, and I'll I'll try to uh, uh, go back to um, uh, uh, to what we just discussed. Um, okay, um, now I'm going to switch to, sh uh, let's see, share screen mode here. Uh, okay, is everything looking good on your end, Melissa? Oh, you're, I'm sorry, I have you muted. Uh, hold on, let me. Okay, can you hear me okay? Well, I didn't realize that you were <laughs> Yeah. You would have been shouting at me all this time while I was looking at my notes. And I uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, I'm going to wave and see if he sees me. Um, uh, also, uh, when you get ready to share, make sure you're going um, on the top of your um, Zoom view and put that to speaker view because it will be you sharing. Okay, speaker view, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So we ready? We are ready. Let me just waiting for your screen. Okay. Let me go ahead and hit that. All right. So let me look here real quick. Uh, TIFF versus JPEG versus uh, other formats. So uh, this one, I really don't need to share my screen with you, but uh, I will anyway. Uh, one of the uh, questions we get a lot is, uh, should I submit my image file to you as a TIFF or should it be a JPEG or BMP bitmap or PNG? And our response is, it's really up to you. However, uh, there are some advantages to the different formats and mainly between uh, a, what we call an uncompressed file and a compressed file. Now, out of the formats that we accept, the compressed format that we, we, we accept is called a JPEG, which most everyone is familiar with. That's the most common file format out there. If you take a picture with your camera, uh, with your phone, uh, your camera phone, it's gonna save it as JPEG. Uh, a lot of artists though, uh, um, 
not as many photographers, but more so the artists like to submit their images to us as TIFFs, which is fine. It's an uncompressed format. It has more data. However, I will uh, say that a TIFF usually does not yield any noticeable difference in the print quality um, compared to a JPEG, which is a compressed format, if that JPEG has not been resaved over and over again, if it, and it has been saved at its highest quality setting. The difference between that compressed format and the uncompressed format of a TIFF uh, is so minor that the printer, the, the, uh, the printing hardware is not going to be able to render that difference. And uh, so when you are printing, when you're providing us a TIFF, you're going to be providing us a larger file, which does, really doesn't make a whole lot of difference to us, but it may make it more difficult for you as far as, uh, you know, it's going to take the file longer to upload. Um, now, there are some other things with the TIFF that you have to uh, be aware of. Uh, why are you on, uh, let me, Melissa, I'm going to, for some reason, you keep getting muted. I'm gonna, oh, okay. Yeah, just in case you need to jump in for any reason, I'll, I want you—I don't want you to be muted. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, what I was saying is, um, with the uh, TIF files, um, if you uh, submit them to us, uh, uh, they'll be uncompressed, so they're going to contain a lot more data. Whereas if you are uploading JPEG, they will upload a lot quicker. Uh, now there's. A few, some other things that you have to watch out for with TIFF, and that is they can contain embedded data, which on occasion we see yield some unexpected res results. Um, so for instance, they, TIFFs can have a lot more information such as uh, transparency layers, um, which are, are these layers that can uh, look, you know, cause your image to look the way you want in Photoshop, but when they get processed by various, you know, printing systems could add things or take away things that, that you don't want there. So we've had instances where people have supplied us TIFF files that they've had, that they've been editing and that have, have multiple layers. Uh, and it results in a print that looks nothing like what, what they, uh, thought they were submitting to us. So when you are submitting to us an image that is a TIFF, make sure that it is flattened, it is not compressed, that there are no layers, uh, and that is it is in an RGB format. Uh, any questions about that? No, not yet. We've had a, a couple of questions about um, digital uh, art, but we'll hit those towards the end. Okay, all right. And uh, anything that we don't address, we'll try to go back and, and readdress as well. Um, so now we're going to do some fun stuff. We're going we're gonna to talk about finding your image resolution, your image size in Photoshop. And the, again, this is an area that we get a lot of questions on. People say, hey, I want to submit my image. Uh, is it going to be suitable for specific print size? And so the question we have to ask, the, ask the, uh, those people is, well, what size is your image file? How many pixels across? How many pixels down is it? So we can do the math and calculate whether or not it is large enough. And a lot of these people have Photoshop and there is a very easy way to find that information by just opening up that image in Photoshop. Um, but and that's what people are asking right now is about the raw file um, that you open. Um, you know, whether that file is a PNG, what, what do they have to know about their raw file that they're opening in Photoshop? Uh, in relationship to the size? I'm, I'm guessing so, because they just, the, the question is uh, from Trudy, who's just asking, what about the raw file? Um, now, well, Trudy, I'm guessing you're asking, uh, as James was explaining, how we, what we, what files we accept. Um, Oh, she means for printing. So, um, yeah. uh, Rudy, we, we don't accept uh, raw files. Um, we, we do uh, uh, ask that you convert the, that raw file. 
that you export it as a JPEG or a TIFF and submit that to us. A raw file is kind of like a digital negative. It's not really meant to be a file that gets printed from. It's a file, it's kind of a setup file. It's a file that, that uh, contains data that uh, of edits and adjustments you've, you've done, but it's not the actual file that you would print. Um, now in relationship to image size, a raw file versus uh, 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 a, an, like a JPEG when it comes to image size, uh, we're gonna be talking about image size in relationship to say a JPEG or a TIFF because a, a raw file could be larger or smaller than the export file that when you export that file. Now, I may have lost uh, some people there. Uh, a lot of photographers probably know what I'm talking about, um, but I'd probably save that conversation for <laughs> a, uh, a, a, a whole nother Zoom meeting or something <laughs> dealing with Lightroom because uh, that gets into a whole nother category. Okay. Um, but uh, anyway, so, so let's talk about uh, what I'm talking about, image size. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a, a uh, probably should have just left that one open, but um, we'll use this, this file right here. This one's a good one to use. Okay, so here I have a file, I'm, I'm looking at it at, uh, at 25%. Now this file you might wonder, someone might, uh, want us to print that and say, okay, what size can I print this at? And it still look good. Well, we usually tell people, we like your file to be, uh, say 150 to 300 pixels per inch to get the best clarity, to get the most sharp uh, print as possible, okay? Usually in that 200 to 300 range, you really can't tell much difference, especially if you're printing on a textured surface. And that's going to give you a, a good quality looking print. Um, but you can find out what size that image will, will print to by coming up to here where it says image, image size. And this right here will pull up your image size dialog. And this information is very helpful. Now, a lot of times when when you pull up this with a file, especially if you've just exported it out of Lightroom or out of your camera, it'll say 72. 72 is the default and then it looks, wow, my image can print huge, 49 by 73. Well, keep in mind that's at 72 pixels per inch, which is not the ideal resolution. Now, if I, there's a fly in here, excuse me. Uh, if I change that resolution to 300, notice how my image size went down, okay? So the, the resolution uh, is and size are relative. Now I can come over here and I can change the size to, uh, let me get this fly here, this, this fly is bugging me. Oh, well. All right. Uh, I change the size to 20, notice how the resolution changed. Now, I'm able to do this, I'm able to play around with a different size by unchecking this box called resample, because up here, I don't want these, I don't want these numbers to change. This 3540px by 5309px, that's how many pixels are in the image. That's how many pixels wide by how many pixels high this image is. So this, this particular file is, uh, is 3540, 3,540 pixels down and 5, I'm sorry, 3,540 pixels across and 5,309 pixels down. Okay, pixels are basically little bits of data. Uh, your, your image file is made up of pixels and uh, the, how many pixels per inch is dependent upon the uh, resolution. So if I change the, again, the resolution to 300, the, uh, the print size becomes 11.8 by 17.6. 
Um, does that seem to make sense to everyone? Melissa, any questions? So far, no. Any questions on this fly that keeps <laughs> <laughs> it keeps landing on me? Uh, 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 Jim raised his hand. Okay. Yeah, see, uh, I think that might have been a, uh, a misfit there. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so let me go back to my notes real quick and see what, what else I got here. Um, so that's about finding your Im image size and resolution size. Again, it's you come over here, image image size. So if you want to know how big you can print this, well, if you want to print it at 150 pixels per inch, I'll uncheck that, I'm sorry. And again, you want to make sure you have inches selected. You can print this at as a 20, you know, you know, basically at, at 23.6 at by 35.3 inches. Okay. If you want this printed with a higher resolution in mind, then you're only going to be able to print this as 11.8 by 17.6. Now, you can always increase the size of this image. And you can add pixels that aren't there. Notice you have uh, 3,540 pixels by 5,309 pixels. Now, there is a, a feature in Photoshop that that's very good. Uh, it's gotten better over the years and it's called resampling. And when you check the uh, resampling box, you can actually increase the pixels there and how oh, this fly. Excuse me, everyone. I'm going to get this fly here. It's too fast. Okay. Um, okay. All right, here we go. Oh. I spilled my coffee. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm going to check the uh, the resample, and I'm going to change the dimensions to say 16. I'm going to make sure I check that or click on the change so it keeps the proportions. Yeah, so notice now I have more pixels. Now if I click OK, that image will expand. It'll get bigger. OK, so that has just added pixels where there weren't any. Now. You can do that, but you probably are not going to really see any benefits, okay? Because first of all, while you're increasing the resolution of the file, you're adding pixels that, that were not initially there. So the software has to guess what color those pixels need to be to fill in all those gaps. And uh, there's different ways to do that, okay? And the way you want to do that is you actually want to use one of these bicubic methods. It's a bicubic with smoother gradients, bicubic sharper, or bicubic smoother. Uh, now you can look at, you know, what the differences are in Photoshop. Some people prefer uh, the smoother over the sharper. I would go with the, the smoother if you're going to do go on a textured surface. I would go with a uh, sharper if you're going to go on a smoother surface. Um, um, smooth gradients if you have a lot of, well, if, if you have a lot of uh, transition from one color to another might be wise. But you can, you can research, you can look that up in Photoshop and get some more information on that. But Nancy the has a, a question here, uh, James. She's asking, what if you resample down in size, sharper or not? Well, anytime you go down, it should be sharper, correct? Yeah, you're typically not going to see any, uh, any problems with the quality when you resample down. Uh, resampling down is, uh, uh, is, is 
when it comes to printing with finer works and you probably uh there probably won't will rarely be a need to do that uh we prefer you to submit the largest file that you can so that uh our system doesn't have to resample it up and let me go ahead and go into some detail about our workflow with the software that we use now we use uh uh image processing software uh, that optimizes the images for print. And th th those software programs uh, use some very advanced algorithms to resize all images to 300 pixels per inch at the intended print size. So our software will always, regardless of the resolution you submit, okay, if this file, let me go ahead and go back to the original. Uh, if this file, and this fly is coming back. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, our system, if, if you were to print this image as a, say, a 16 by 24, our system will basically do what we're doing here with Photoshop. Now, uh, so you don't have to do it because our system will, will enlarge the image or decrease the size automatically. So uh, it, it's kind of redundant for you to do it. Matter of fact, if you submit to us a smaller file, uh, uh, that's probably better because our system can show you some warnings as far as, you know, hey, this is not the preferred resolution. Uh, whereas if you, enlarge the file, it'll trick our system because our file won't know what your file resolution originally was. So we'd rather you submit the, the file as it originally is and let our system either downsize or upsize it. Now, another advantage for our system is our, the software that we use uh, uses some more advanced resizing algorithms than Photoshop has. Photoshop does a good job, but our system has basically uh, enlargement algorithms that, that are better at adding those pixels that weren't there. So if you submit a, a lower resolution file, our system will uh, do a better job of optimizing it for print than say Photoshop would. Uh, I think there was a question. Did, did you see that, Melissa? Was there a um, question? Yeah, we had a, a, what do you call, what software do, um, well, those are going kind of fast there. What software do you use that you are talking about? We are we are on Photoshop um, for a Greco, and then uh, we had someone ask um, on Photoshop about using uh, Preserve Details 2.0. Um, he's had good luck with that. It's a new feature. Um, I guess we can kind of uh, hit that towards the end. So, uh, what you can do? Um, so. Uh, here's something you can do is, uh, and both questions, I'll, I'll take both questions at the same time. First of all, the, the software that we use, we, we use, uh, we, we use several different programs, but the, we use a, it's not an off the shelf system. It's a, um, it's a, how, how do I explain this? It's a proprietary we, we have our own uh, in-house processing software, but it uses a library of code. Um, and I don't remember the name of that library right offhand, but it has the, this specific sizing algorithm. Um, i trying to remember what that is called, um, but it's built into our, uh, into our proprietary software. Um, uh, but, and then the other question was preserve details 2.0. If you have good luck with one of these formats, uh, use, use that. Um, and what I neglected to tell anyone, I, I, I should have remembered this, is if you do size your image to 300 uh, uh, pixels per inch, say 16 by 24 at 300 pixels per inch, um, I just remembered our system now, uh, with some changes that we had made, I guess about a year ago or so, our system will not make any resolution changes. We'll, we'll just we'll leave that file alone. So, uh, uh, so I was partially 
incorrect what, what I initially said, you know, you, you're, uh, there's no sense in that it's redundant. So you do have control. So, uh, so uh, I, I should have said, if you resize in Photoshop and you're fine with it, you like the, what Photoshop does and you prefer that, you're more comfortable with enlarging it in Photoshop, enlarge it in Photoshop the way you see fit and our system will leave it alone. Does that make sense? You think that made sense to everyone? So, okay, thanks. Okay. And, okay, and, and almost got the fly. Okay, <laughs> all right. So uh, I think I, we need to go to the next topic here. Okay, go ahead. Um, now, uh, uh, let, let me show y'all a, a, a little trick here. Um, now I have the ruler turned on. Um, but uh, by default, when you uh, use Photoshop, the ruler tool is usually turned off. Uh, I like to turn it on. Obviously, the ruler tool is helpful for us. Um, now, we do use Photoshop uh, uh, for certain things like certain services like color correction and uh, some just kind of things unrelated to uh, what you guys are doing. Uh, we do use Photoshop a lot, um, uh, but uh, we will also use it to when customers come into our lobby and uh, we help them with an image, we'll, we'll sometimes load up the image in Photoshop and we'll preview it with them. And we always turn the ruler tool on, make sure that that's on. Now, the ruler tool, let me show you how that is helpful. So first I'm gonna go to view, and under rulers, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on, okay? Now, this is where you're going to have to come over to image size, and you are going to want to set your print size at the, that your width and height at the intended print size. So let me say I want to print this as an, as an eight by 12, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this as an 8 and 11.998, 12, you know, okay, close enough. Okay, oops, let me turn that off. I'm gonna, I don't want that on right now. Okay, so notice the resolution is uh, skyrocketed, 442, which is fine. That's great. It's going to, uh, our system will size it down, but it won't hurt it. Um, It'll size it down to 300. Uh, uh, it's earlier when we're talking about, you know, y'all controlling the uh, resampling. It's only going to be beneficial if you're resizing up. Um, uh, so let's go ahead and click OK. Now notice my ruler here, OK? The uh, from 1 to 8, OK? And down here from 0 to 12, OK? So I'm seeing what my, my document size or my canvas size. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom in and you can go uh, uh, just zoom in, control plus, I don't remember what it is on Mac, I think command plus. Um, and notice the, this ruler starts to get bigger, okay? Now, depending upon your screen size and your screen resolution on your screen, you may want to zoom it in a little bit more, okay? But what you want to do is try to zoom the zero to one, take, take a ruler, an actual ruler, uh, and hold it up to your screen and zoom in until this is approximately, physically, on your screen, approximately one inch, each inch, in each inch increment is approximately one inch. Now, let me, now you can, uh, you may need to tweak it and you can do that. Let me find, where is the nav tool? Uh, the navigator, okay. And over here, you might need to set it at maybe 55 to get a little bit closer, hit, hit enter. And so actually that's, I think that's closer to one inch. And now I can look at this image at scale. Okay, I can see whether or not it's going to look pixelated. I don't see any pixelation here. But let's say I wanted to 
make this image much, I wanted to print this much bigger. Let's say I wanted to print this as a, oh, I don't know, let's say a 30 by 44 or 45, it's huge, okay? Okay, now I'm gonna zoom in again. Notice, notice how those increments, those one inch increments changed and I muted you again accidentally. Melissa, let me. No problem, that was, that might've been me. Okay, um, so I'm gonna zoom back in and now let's take a look at this. Oh, that's probably a little bit too much. Let's try uh, 280, um, maybe 250. Okay, yeah, it's probably a little bit bigger than an inch, um, but now I'm going to look, I can look at the details. I can see if there's any pixelation. And I don't really see much. This is a pretty sharp image, even though the resolution image size is only 118. Now this is with, uh, if you're scanning your artwork, uh, you're going to notice any pixelation more so than you probably would with your photography simply for the fact that uh, uh, with the scanning, uh, uh, you're not dealing with the lens fall off, you're not dealing with you know, the, the whole lens factor itself. With photography, a lot of times you have blur in the, in the lens, which uh, is going to be more impactful than any pixelation. Um, I really don't see any pixelation here, I just see really just kind of the, the images just a little softer. Uh, and that's, again, because of the lens. But when you are doing this with a scan of, of your artwork or even a digitally created piece, uh, you're more likely to notice pixelation. Now, pixelation, I'm going to really zoom in. It looks like a, so you can kind of see it, is where you get these kind of, oh, oh darn it. I mean, it's where you have these little, uh, can y'all see these little kind of blocky things? Okay. Yes. And uh, we have we do see instances where people submit to us images that are so low resolution where uh, and where you can see that pixelation, especially if it's a very low resolution uh, that maybe someone sent to them. Uh, it's a photo, for instance, that they sent them as a text or in a text message. They send it to us to print. They want to blow it up to 30 by 40. Yeah, you know, first of all, that text message applicant app is going to probably shrink the image. <laughs> then they want our system to blow it up, and our system will blow it up. But you get these little jaggedy that that I call it that webcam look. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, just something to be aware of. Um, and I think that any questions how you can use the ruler to your advantage. And, uh, give people a moment while I check what the next top, what the next area was. And just a, a note from one of uh, our Zoom uh, audience members. Uh, he's, uh, uh, this is from Gordon. Um, it's worth nothing that the monitor only displays 72 DPI. So what they see is not 300 DPI. When they're, so when you're viewing these and you're uh, yeah. zooming in, are you seeing the monitor 72 DPI, I guess, versus how it, how it what, what's going to be the uh, eyeball difference, I guess? Yeah, there, there is the factor in that the monitor is, is set, might be set at 72 dots per inch. But we're talking about simulating uh, what it's going to look like in print versus, you know, actuality. And this was this is a way to simulate uh, what you're going to see in print. Um, you know, I, when you look at it in print, it's going to look a lot different than on your screen anyway, because you're dealing with a reflective, you know, uh, image. You know, an image that's reflecting the light off you versus projected by your monitor. But uh, the the Monitor, that's why when you open up a, a file uh, that doesn't have any resolution data assigned to it, it's always going to open up in Photoshop as 72 pixels per inch because that's what everyone's monitor is set at. I don't know if that answered the question or not, and maybe I didn't understand it correctly. It was more of a, a 
kind of a comment um, on on the uh, on what they're viewing. Correct. Okay. I, okay. I'm not sure if I, I think quite got. It. Hopefully, <laughs> didn't. if uh, if that Gordon, if that didn't quite. Um, you know, elaborate on to what your comment was. Go ahead and elaborate in the in the comment, and we'll get back to that. Yeah. So um, let me go to the next topic. Um, um, modifying your image size. Okay. Now we're going to talk about flattening layers or save to JPEG. Now we touched on some of that. I'm going to go ahead and open up a different image here. And uh, uh, earlier I had mentioned that in Photoshop or I'm sorry, with TIFFs, um, you are able to uh, save a lot of data, okay? You're actually able to save layers. Layers are uh, a component uh, or of an image or part of an image that, that are allowed with certain file formats, Photoshop file formats, TIFFs. There's other file formats out there that also allow for layers. But layers allow you to uh, paint stuff onto the image or apply uh, effects to the image uh, uh, and be able to remove all of those effects, okay? Um, but uh, I don't want to get too much into, you know, the purpose of layers, but the problem that we see is that sometimes these layers get in the way. And with, especially when people submit their images as TIFFs. So let's say uh, they, this right here, let me go ahead and do this. I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Okay, I have two layers here. And this one, this one, hold on. I'm gonna change to uh, black and white. Okay, so I have one black and white layer and I have one color layer and I'm going to turn that layer off. I'm gonna hide that layer. Now I'm gonna save this as a TIFF. Now that's fine, but there is the possibility. Now I, I think in most cases our software will, will, will be okay, but there has been times where people have done certain things with having layers and they've saved their file as a TIFF I'm going to save this as, and they have this box checked called layers. Well, that pervert, uh, uh, preserves the layers in that TIFF file. And there is a potential that when that when we receive that file, if that layers feature is turned on, okay, that it may print black and white, even though you have it hidden. So, when you're submitting TIFFs, if you're going to save your file as a TIFF, make sure that that layers box is turned off. That way Photoshop will, will not save that black and white layer that I had just created. And I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm going to click none here. And also uh, image compression, make sure that's set at none. And you should be able to keep, yeah, you want to make sure it says discard layers and save a copy and keep all the rest as is and click OK. Now, uh, when I open that file that I just saved as, you shouldn't see any layers. Okay, and that's what we want. We don't want to see any layers because uh, your layers that sometimes people forget they have kind of a hidden layer in there could wreak havoc on the the, the print itself. Uh, so uh, again, with your TIFFs, you want to make sure that you do not, and you want to either remove or save a copy without any layers. <clears throat> now, if you just go save it as a JPEG, there won't be any layers. Uh, uh, it'll just flatten all the layers will, will uh, hidden layers will be removed. Uh, any questions on that? Not on the layers. Okay. All right. Let's see. 
Um, let's see if I've missed anything about that. Uh, okay, now saving a print copy image. Now this is kind of goes back to when we're talking about the raw files. Um, programs like Lightroom, um, uh, many of the photographers out there are familiar with Lightroom um, and even Photoshop. Uh, when you open up a raw file, and a raw file, like I said, is a digital negative, essentially, uh, that uh, you can have your uh, camera, your digital camera, uh, shoot in that raw mode or raw plus JPEG mode. Uh, uh, you can edit those raw files in Photoshop and then save it as a JPEG. And so you want to basically uh, always do whether it be a raw file or a TIFF or a Photoshop file, you always want to do all your work in an uncompressed format. And then when you want to submit it, submit it in a format that the color lab of your choice, which we hope is Final Works, prefers. In this case, we want you to submit it to us as either a TIFF or a JPEG. Um, and then, so do all your edits in Photoshop. And then after you finish your edits or you're happy with your edits, export it or save a copy as a JPEG, you know, maybe rename it, you know, you know, you know, painting one, two, three underscore print file, you know, something uh, that differentiates that file. That's the one that we want to use for print. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? No. Okay. Okay, now we're going to get into my favorite topic, cropping or fitting an image uh, uh, to your print size. So, um, oh, this why is just driving me nuts. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm catching it, but I'm not. Uh, so, uh, Oh, we're getting a little bit of mic trouble from you, James. Are we okay now? A uh, little, little low there. Okay. There you are. I don't know what that did, but <laughs> all right. Uh, so Dave uh, is saying color spec CMYK versus uh, RGB, and we we take uh, RGB, but I, I was going to get into that a little bit uh, in in a few topics down, but I'll go okay. ahead. And we'll, we'll get down to that. Uh, so we'll hit that in a second, Dave. Well, why don't we, I, I, I don't mind bringing it up, talking about it now. Okay. Uh, uh, RGB is the short answer. Okay. Now, uh, a lot of people, especially if, you know, uh, artists that have gone to design school, and graphic designers, uh, they're used to working with CMYK. And CMYK is a, uh, is a great format. It has its its uses, there's a reason to utilize CMYK uh, for certain things. But for our workflow, which is really, even though the, I would say 70% uh, of our customers are artists doing art prints, and only 30% of our users are photographers, uh, we utilize a photographer's workflow because that tends to yield the better quality prints. Uh, CMYK is a color mode or color, color format that's ideal for offset printing. We do digital printing with wide format printers pr predominantly. And the workflow set up for printing those, th those printers were designed for photographers uh, initially. Um, so the high-end art reproductions that are produced nowadays, Z clay, G clay, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, prints of today are done on wide format photo printers. And those printers, because they were designed for the photo industry and the photography industry works in an RGB mode, we have adopted, we adopted that years ago early on. And so, uh, and even though occasionally people do submit CMYK, usually it's not a problem uh, uh, up to, we, we made some changes with our software that uh, better handled it, but uh, the CMYK color space uh, does not convert as well and you 
can lose a lot of tone, a lot of detail when you bring it into that RGB mode, uh, into that R RGB workflow. For that reason, we recommend, and I'll go ahead and open up an image here, and I'll, I'll show you how you can change it from CMYK to RGB. And Stephen's uh, asking, uh, which RGB color space do you print, sRGB or Adobe RGB? I'll, I'll uh, answer that in just a second. Um, right. uh, actually, since we're going to be I'm bringing up this image, I'm going to be using this image anyway in just a moment, but um, should I just kept it open? Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to assign a profile. Okay, and actually, you know, I don't want to assign a profile. I want to Set the color settings. So uh, color settings, and you know what? I don't have a CMYK. I'm trying to remember how, how do I do this? Okay. Uh, I'll just okay. We'll do we'll do that right now. I don't know what it'll do to my image, but we'll just do that for now. Um, so. Uh, oh, it didn't change it. Hold on. Oh, so let's do that, not that. Okay, so now my here I have an image that's called CMYK. Now you guys don't really see any difference, okay? Which is fine, but the data has changed, and when that data gets to our system, okay. The question was whether or not it will process it correctly and it'll print just fine or not. Uh, I, I can't guarantee that. It, there is a greater, there, there's a, there is a potential that when it converts when, to our printer's RGB color space that some data will get lost. So if your image is CMYK, you want to go to image mode and then change it to RGB. Okay, that's all you have to do. Now, it will change it to the, uh, it should change it to the source space or the space that, that you have Photoshop set up for. In this case, I have it set up for sRGB. And that leads to a, a question as to which RGB is best. Um, one second, let me go back to something here. Let me go to history. Okay. So which RGB is best? So there's uh, really three types. Yeah, I, yeah so I guess you could say four that, that, that are fine to work with uh, in this case. Uh, you have your sRGB, which is what kind of is the default uh, RGB that most systems are utilizing, uh, scanners, cameras, etc. Uh, uh, you have your Pro Photo RGB, which is a relative newcomer, um, which is my favorite. It has the widest range of, of tones and colors, in my opinion. Um, and then you have your Adobe RGB, which is kind of somewhere in between sRGB and Pro Photo RGB, or you have your Apple RGB. I don't know if if, uh, if Apple RGB is, we, we don't see that files in Apple RGB mode that often anymore. I guess uh, Apple uh, switched everything to either Adobe or sRGB. Uh, but uh, what our printer, our, our printing software accepts all four, uh, usually without any problem. Uh, every now and then we see an image that, uh, that Pro Photo RGB gives us some problems. Um, not quite sure why, um, but usually, and I think it was was, you know, it's been a while since it's really been that much of an issue. But uh, uh, we we used to initially had some problems converting Pro Photo RGB, um, and then I do know that the website sometimes people contact us say that their preview looks kind of strange when they submit pro photo RGB 
and that usually has to do with the color settings of your of your browser whether or not it is able to display the pro photo rgb correctly or not uh, but our system with our workflow when an image comes in any of those those formats our our printing software that we use is and i don't understand all the uh the uh, science behind it or the programming behind it is supposed to be able to accept these wide range of RGB formats and process them correctly. <laughs> so the short answer is it shouldn't matter, okay? Because what it's going to do, and I'll try to be as non-technical as, as I can, is it's going to convert it to the color space used by the printer for that particular media and that particular uh, ink and, and printer being used. And it should handle any of those RGBs just fine. But uh, again, my favorite is Profoto. Uh, the most reliable is gonna be sRGB. And uh, uh, if you're not sure what, what you prefer, go Adobe RGB. Uh, I think there's a few questions on that. Is there, Melissa? Yeah, we had, um... Well, we have a couple of people who are asking because of their digital painting um, on Corel. Um, it looks, let me go back up. That's kind of missed. Uh, I think that was Rosemary that had that question. Uh, what color space is recommended for digital painting? Uh, she uses a Corel painter. And we have a similar question like that off of Facebook. Um, but I. I think what you're saying is kind of explaining that, and I'm seeing if we, Rosemary, uh, would, with what James said, did that explain? Uh, let's see. Okay, I haven't seen anything back. I'm, I'm thinking you might have gotten that, and I think a couple of people um, in the chat may have clarified that for her. Okay. Yeah, and, and I'm wondering if uh, Corel Painter, it's, it's a great program. I love that program. I haven't used it in a while, but um, I, I think there, it may even have some of its own kind of proprietary profiles, if I'm not mistaking. mistaken. Uh, but I'm, I'm not sure what it defaults to. It may be like Photoshop and just default to uh, 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 sRGB in most cases, but uh, try to stay away from CMYK if you're a digital artist because nowadays, um, in most cases, uh, unless you're going to be doing a like a, a large poster run uh, where, you, where they're going to be doing some more, I want to say almost traditional printmaking where the, or screen printing, uh, CMYK is more for where you're going to do color separation. So. I would uh, just uh, stick with uh, an RGB mode if you're a digital artist um, or convert it to uh, RGB uh, when you're ready to print with uh, a company like us. Um, okay. Um, yeah, we have uh, Gordon uh, Curry and Gordon actually has been using Photoshop for 21 years. So he's actually giving us some really good comments. Um, here in Zoom, and he's also sRGB is just the best choice, and does recommend getting the sample kit. Yeah, yeah, sRGB is kind of like you know, uh, it's just it's it's you know, it's reliable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you, uh, you know, yeah, you can do some things with the others, you know, get get some better results with the others if you in certain areas. But hey, you know, sRGB is going to be reliable. It's not going to it's not going to hurt anything unless you're really kind of doing your own printing at home. You're really trying to spend a lot of time tweaking those colors and get everything just right. sRGB is fine. Okay. Um, I guess uh, before I, I go on, I'm, I'm going to talk real quickly about our calibration print. I, I save that since we're talking about these color spaces, I really want to get into cropping. Uh, but let me just kind of uh, I know Michelle or uh, Melissa is going to get really upset if I don't talk about the calibration print. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't want to go so long that I, uh, we don't have time for it. Our sample kit includes uh, that you can order at Final Works, uh, includes a calibration print. And a lot of people don't understand how to use that. 
Um, and the sample kit, I'm, I'm just explain, I'm not gonna uh, go through the process. Um, it's, it's simple enough that I think I can just explain it. Uh, I will go to our website to show you where, where it's found. Um, Works.com. And uh, the yeah. products. Oops, products. Oh, the right link would help. Mm -hmm. um, the calibrate. Uh, well, you just go to calibration print, or you can go to order a starter kit. It comes with a starter kit, yeah. but you'll want to go over here after when you have your calibration print and you'll want to download a copy of it. It's just, it's just a PDF. Um, and well, I guess I better probably go through the process. Okay. Okay, now you're going to take your calibration print, which is a printed copy. We print it on, I believe we print it on our archival matte paper, which is kind of our house stock paper. And it's taking a while to download for some reason. I'm downloading this. And I'm gonna open this up in Photoshop. I don't wanna open up in the browser because the, your browser settings can always be off or, or uh, not be, set correctly so I'm, we're going to do it in photoshop now it's a pdf file now photoshop opens up pdfs just fine and a lot of times people want to print pdfs and we don't accept pdfs to print but you can open it up in photoshop and uh, save it as a jpeg after you open up that pdf so i'm in this case i'm going to open up that that calibration print i said i wasn't going to walk do a, a example but here i am doing <laughs> yeah uh, so i'm gonna just open up this pdf moment okay now i have this pdf open let me minimize some of these these tools here and get these out of the way um okay so i have this this PDF open. Now, what you'll do is you'll take your the the printed copy that we send you, the calibration print, and you'll basically hold this up to your screen. Now, depending upon your monitor, the type of uh, uh, screen settings that you are using, um, uh, the, the hardware you're using, uh, how you adjust your monitor is going to be different for everyone or, or for you know the tools that they're using. Um, but you'll actually open this up in Photoshop and you will adjust your monitor. Not You won't adjust the image in Photoshop. You'll adjust your monitor, you'll adjust your color settings to try to match as close as possible to the, uh, to the colors uh, of that hard copy print version uh, so that uh, these tones, these browns, these yellows, oranges, greens, that they, they match as close as possible. Now I'll say you won't be able to get it 100% because um, uh, you're, you know, it's, it's, just, it, it's just impossible to get it 100%, you know, just doing it this way. But it'll get it closer than it might otherwise be. A lot of times people tell us, hey, my prints are too dark. And it's because their monitor is set too bright. And this will help you see whether or not your, your monitor is set too bright. Or maybe your monitor is too dark. And, okay, and your prints look a little overexposed. Well, again, this kind of helps you really kind of make sure that that, you know, that brightness level, that darkness level is not too great on, on your screen. So you're not doing all your adjustments, your editing on a monitor that's too bright or too dark. Now there are better tools than this, okay? This is just kind of a quick and easy tool. There's things like, uh, uh, and you can just do an internet search, Color Monkey, and I think Monkey is spelled M-U-N-K-I. There's the uh, Spider, S-P-Y-D-E-R. These are actually hardware tools that can calibrate your screen, calibrate your monitor. Um, and, and there's even monitors that have built-in calibration tools that are more advanced monitors. 
Uh, but for something uh, simple, easy to do, I, I think the calibration print uh, is helpful. It's not going to, it's not perfect, but it's it's better than nothing in many cases. Uh, most, do you think that? I think that was, that was great. <laughs> I may okay. grab that little segment and just make that whole little segment um, its own little video right there. <laughs> All right. Uh, so now we're going to talk about cropping. Okay. And I have several images I want to I want to open on this one, obviously. And then I think I have another one I'm going to use as an example. Um, uh, let's see. Vector cropping. Custom order. Okay. I thought I had another. File. I guess I'll just use it. This is the perfect example anyway. Most people's cameras are shooting in a two to three aspect ratio, like a, as a eight by 12 or a two to by three, you know, uh, you know, that means that it's, it's not gonna, it's, it's not, most people aren't shooting in an, a four by five aspect ratio, which is, you know, ideal for like an eight by 10 or a 16 by 20. Our most popular sizes though, are that four to five aspect ratio. So a lot of people are sending us images that, uh, and again, we're, we're gonna just use photography, this photo as an example, uh, but it, it happens with artwork as well. Um, they send us an, a file that is not exactly a match for the dimensions that they want to print. Okay. So by what happens is they're going to lose some of that image, okay? So let's say I want to print this as an eight by 10. I'm gonna check, first I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna check my sizes. I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna uncheck resample. I'm gonna change this to uh, uh, eight and I'm gonna keep, um, just change it to eight. And notice my height says uh, 11.9 or, or essentially 12, okay? And so I have an eight by 12, but I wanna print it as an eight by 10. Well, this is where Photoshop's crop tool is very useful. And I suggest that you go through this process uh, uh, first so you can, where, where you have the most control. Now our ordering system will also let you control the cropping and I'll show you how that works in just a second. But I'm going to go ahead and, and click on this crop tool up here. And I'm gonna change this number here to eight by 10. Now the first number is always width. So, so uh, whenever you, you hear eight by 10, 16 by 20, uh, et cetera, you're always talking width by height. If you hear 10 by eight, then you're talking about 10 inches across and eight inches down. But anyway, we're talking eight by 10. I'm gonna then click on, now, now that I have this eight by 10 tool here, I can drag it up or I can drag it down. If I kept it centered, I, I risk losing part of the top of, of uh, this person's head. Mm -hmm. And the composition, if, if I sent that in and printed that, it would look terrible. Um, if I, so what I wanna do is I want to drag it, drag the image so that I, I'm not losing uh, the top of his head. So, but notice that I am losing some parts of the image and that's just, you know, that's the reality of printing an image that is not an exact match uh, to the aspect ratio of the intended print size. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you want to be conscientious of that. Now, when ordering on our system, and my internet here is like running really slow, so bear with me. And that's something to note too with um, framing, well photographers, they tend to frame their photos uh, for that uh, crop. Uh, so that if you do have the aspect ratio from your, your camera versus your print, you have more to play with on there. And I believe some of the artists that, um, that I've worked with uh, through Final Works have said that they've had to go uh, again because of the curving um, on the lens. They've actually had to shoot their images a little farther out, just again so that they can play with that crop a little better. Yeah. 
Now, uh, we're, I'm gonna I'm just use that same image here um, since it's, <clears throat> so you can kind of see how you can do that um, with, post. With, with post. So again, I'm gonna submit, I, I uploaded that file already um, uh, to my account and it is that, that eight to 12 aspect ratio. And I'm gonna go ahead and select this, but I wanna print this as an eight by 10. And I'll just select fine art paper print, archival map paper, and, uh, and I'll just select a half inch border. I'll select eight by 10. Now, this is what gets some people in trouble, okay? And what it also gets us in trouble because we usually will end up just reprinting the image for the, uh, the user, no questions asked, you know, we'll, we'll tell them what happened, but they'll send us an image, uh, that eight by 10 image, and they'll, they'll say, and we'll print it, they'll, they'll see it on their screen and we'll print it and we'll send it to them. And then they contact us and they say, hey, I love the print, but uh, you know, uh, my husband's head is, is half his head is, is, is cut off. And uh, you know, customer service say, okay, we'll help you out. But you know, didn't you <laughs> see that the preview? And, and a lot of times, sometimes people say, well, we thought we'd, you, you guys would just fix it or, uh, or they'll say, oh yeah, I, I see that now. I didn't think about that. And so uh, uh, you ha we're not gonna automatically fix that. Uh, and the reason being is because we just have too many images that we're dealing with. Sometimes we'll spot something and you know, if we'll, we'll, we'll contact a customer, but our people are dealing literally every day, they're dealing with thousands of images that they're just having to go through, I mean, at, at uh, a record breaking pace and uh, images, one image just starts to look like another <laughs> when you're dealing with that many images of files. And plus we have some automated systems as well. So some cases they're not even seeing files depending upon the type of product. They're not seeing the images. So uh, we ask that you be aware of that. Now you can fix this, okay? Just like we did in Photoshop and sometimes people miss it. I, uh, but it's just a matter of clicking on Oh gosh, this fly is driving me nuts. <laughs> Can y'all see it buzzing around me? No, because we're, we're seeing full screen, so uh, um, we're seeing your screen. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, uh, I mean, I'm in what? This is the she fly episode. And this fly is like singling me out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so I clicked on the image uh, and notice the I have this box right here. Now I can drag this and reposition it. Then I just click back. And it has made that correction. Now what will happen is when our system, when our system uh, processes this image, it will make the changes that you made in post. So make sure you all are conscientious of of how the composition looks in your in your browser, and we're talking composition, not not color, because web browsers can do weird things to colors. Uh, so uh, kind of take that a little bit with a grain of salt. Um, they don't always see certain things correctly. Um, this is the limitation of, of some web browsers. I'm getting better at it, but uh, this really is to look at composition. Um, James, can you show that? Because people are kind of confused on the composition with the border. Can you show that as borderless um, on there? Because really, um, a bill on Facebook was asking, well, is it off because of the border? Your border, um, when you're adding a half inch border, basically you're going on your sheet size. So that's an inch extra on all around. So the sheet size on this would be nine by 11 uh, bill. But uh, if James can show that as a borderless print, when you input something like an eight by 12 image and ask for an eight by 10, you'll still get that same crop. It's not because of selecting the border. So uh, yeah, what she's saying is the, the eight by 10 we're talking about is from here, that corner, you now this thing is kind of in the way, from this edge to this edge is eight inches. And from here to here is 10. Okay, now this border is external. It goes outside of the print area and we call this the sheet size. 
okay? So when you order an eight by 10 with a half inch extra border, you're ordering eight by 10 with a half inch extra board out, outside. So eight plus half inch is eight and a half, plus another half is nine inches. Uh, you have 10 plus 10 and a half plus another half, so 11. So you have nine by 11 is the sheet size. Does that make sense? Uh, it, it does. Uh, can you, like I said, can you uh, redo yeah. this image but borderless so that they can see the crop without the border? So again, I'll do eight by 10, okay? And now you don't have any border, so your print size and your sheet size both are eight by 10 in this case. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, and let me show you this right here. What you'll see is there is a little bit of a bleed, okay? So your image is actually gonna be enlarged slightly past that uh, eight by 10 range so that when our uh, production staff, when they get the print, uh, because it, it's not going to spit out the printer with without a border. It, it's going to actually be uh, printed on this on a big expanse uh, uh, on a roll, a huge roll, uh, with you know nested with a bunch of other prints. And they're going to have to trim away. Uh, uh, they're going to have to cut that print out basically. And uh, with Jaclay printing, it's uh, it's not as automated, so they're doing it by hand. So we need a little bit of bleed there to make sure, and then we try to cut it to that eight by 10 as perfect as possible. It, it, sometimes it's off by like an eighth of an inch or so. So it might be, uh, you know, when you look at it, you know, if you were to take a ruler, it might measure, you know, eight point, you know, 125 by 10 or 8.125 by 10.125, depending upon, you know, how precise they're cutting it. Um, uh, but the, uh, that borderless print uh, is going to be approximately eight by ten, in, as in this case. Uh, does that kind of? Yeah, that, I, think, I think that made sense for for Bill to see that too. Okay, Bill, if you, if 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 we need to clarify that, let us know because uh, maybe you know um, we weren't you know we we weren't understanding the question correctly. Yeah, well, he was, what his concern was, um, he thought maybe it was the border. When you're adding a border, does the crop, um, but again, I wanted to show him just when you did it borderless, yeah, the, the, it's the, regardless, the, it's the image is still going to be sized down to eight by 10. So. The border is going to go outside of this of crop, mm -hmm. basically. Okay. Now there's something that you can do um, in Photoshop. Uh, to match the aspect. Now, we disabled it uh, in post because it caused a lot of headaches. Uh, people would accidentally use the feature that we had built in and, yeah. and when it wasn't their intent to. Um, so, uh, but you can control this and you can go the opposite direction. What you can do uh, is you can always make your image fit an eight by 10 inch area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, in Photoshop, I'm gonna create an eight by 10 document, um, eight inches, oh, pixels, uh, eight by 10. And we're just using eight by 10 because just it's an easy number to, to, uh, to work with. Now I have a blank eight by 10 document, okay? Now in Photoshop, I can bring that file in, and I think I caught that file finally. Mm -hmm. uh, I can import that, uh, just do place embedded. I can bring this file in. And then I can save it as a JPEG, okay? And I can upload that file. Now, when I upload that file, it will have these embedded margins, these white spaces, okay, which our system sees as just part of the image. So this image will still 
register to us as you know uh, eight by ten, okay. Even though technically the image stops here, and the image is only if I drag this is technically uh, six and a little bit over six and a half by by uh, uh, oops a little over six and a half by ten. Okay, now I can also, if I want to really control the margins, and a lot of times people do this because they, they have, uh, uh, let's say they have a set of mats at home or a frame at home, uh, but they want the whole picture to fit in that eight by 10 frame, is, is they, will, they will manipulate the layer. They'll, they'll come over here. Oh, I'm sorry, image, uh, actually edit, transform, and scale. And I'm going to hold the shift button down and and on the Mac, I don't remember what, what you hold down, but you hold shift or command down and you can kind of drag, scale it up, scale it down and you can fit it on your, on your Photoshop document. Okay. And all of this white space uh, is technically part of the image in our eyes. Mm -hmm. But it lets you preserve the image. Now, if I were to save this, save as, and I'll just save it as a, um, save it as JPEG, and I will upload this. I'm going to shrink this down um, just so it uploads faster. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go ahead and go to files. I'm going to upload this, and I'm going to show you what happens. And actually, I had some examples I could have showed you already, but, but I'll just do this. It's fine. Yeah, and I was just explaining to Jim, like if he wanted an eight by ten sheet, and let's say they did want that, you know, the uh, the crop, the the aspect ratio crop, then you would have like a seven by nine with a half inch border would give you an eight by ten sheet. And this example uh, for a uh, build. This would be one way to get an eight by ten sheet size with the full image. Yeah. Now, now look here. Here I, I uploaded the file, and it is uh, eight by ten. It has, you know, it looks like it has a border, and yeah, I, and you can control that border. You know, it's that's you know, in Photoshop, you know, or expand the image. However, you know, lay it out, comp compose it the way you want. But uh, essentially, I have a border. I have a white space. Okay, I call it an embedded margin. Mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of differentiate the two. But the cut sheet size is going to be eight by ten. Uh, the print size is eight by ten because this is just as much part of the image as as her face. And uh, again, somebody's asking how much bleed um, on these things is going to be that point uh, one five. Uh, yeah, about an uh, about an eighth of an inch on on all sides. Okay, so uh, uh, so if you, uh, I wouldn't uh, factor that in, and and we're gonna uh, I, we don't have a whole lot of time. We're gonna right. cover it, but uh, we have what we call safe zones that that we're gonna encourage you all to use, uh, and I'll, we'll explain that in just a moment. Uh, so you don't have to worry about too much for bleed. The most printing systems, whether it's for printing photos or uh, you know the you know the big systems used to print those Kodak prints, or uh, or the way we you know cut the jaclays, we 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 do some things to account for bleed, so you don't have to worry about it too much. It gets more. Uh, you know, when you're printing things like cards, and then it gets a little, uh, it's, it's a little bit more complex. But uh, we'll probably have to save that for another time period. But generally, just uh, leave yourself room for about one eighth of an inch on all sides. So uh, again, just real quick, and I'm going to click on this. You notice I can't really do much. I can't. It's always going to kind of pop back in place because this box is seeing that white margin as part of the image. So, um, uh, so that's kind of how cropping works. Um, one quick example, uh, again, you know, cropping, if a lot of people like to do square prints, 
So if I do a 10 by 10, you know, don't expect your rectangular image to fit in that 10 by 10 area. It's like mm -hmm. trying to fit a, uh, a rectangle into a square hole, you know, rectangle peg into a square hole. Doesn't quite work. You're going to have to lose something if you do that, or you're going to have to adjust the image in Photoshop like we did, add some margins and so forth. And uh, let's see, just um, I, uh, there's probably some more that I could, more details I can go in with cropping, but I, I wanted people just to get the gist of that because yeah. it, that simple part right there loses a lot of people. And it's, it's not that complex uh, once you see a visual. Uh, and we as artists, we tend to be visual people. So when people start throwing numbers and uh, concepts at me, I, I mean, I, my eyes tend to glaze over. And <laughs> Y'all you know, may be like me, and hopefully that will <laughs> that that visual helps. Um, so, yeah, okay, that helps a lot. Yeah, uh, uh, I think we kind of we talked about selecting preferred color space. We we did uh, touch on Adam custom margin space there as well. I kind of wanted to go in a little bit more detail on that, but just because of time, I don't I think we. Uh, checking the image is too dark or too bright. Um, the calibration. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you. We, we talked about the calibration print, but there's something you want to look at in Photoshop. Um, I'm going to open this image that I have here that looks a little dark. Now, if you send us an image that's too dark, okay, um, there is a possibility that uh, we might contact you and there's a better possibility that we won't. And the reason being is because we don't know your intent. Now this image looks too dark and, and I know for a fact that this is intentional. We'll get images where, where the photographer or the artist, they submit it to us, they want it to be dark. They want it to print that way. Uh, and we just don't know. We don't know the intent, okay? But you know your intent. And so the Biggest problem we we run into is people sending us images that are too dark. And I'm going to show you how to check that in Photoshop. Uh, there's a tool called a histogram, and many photographers uh, shooting with their digital SLR cameras are familiar with a histogram. Histogram is a tool, it's a graphical tool that lets you see if your image leans toward the dark spectrum or to the lighter spectrum arc side of the, <laughs> or the good side. Um, so in Photoshop, it's going to be under image and levels. And this right here is hitch histogram. Anything leaning left means it's leaning to the, to the dark spectrum. If you have a lot of data here, that's what this symbolizes. Okay, if, it's, if a lot of it is on the left side, then that means a lot of it's going to be dark. More, it's going to be more dark than it's bright. Matter of fact, if you notice nothing is at this very end, which means there is not a single white pixel in this image. Okay, if, if that's fine with you, uh, then great. But if it prints, if, if the print looks dark to you and you don't have, and, and you go and open up this image to see if there is, you know, any white points, then, then that's, you know, that's why it, it printed dark. Now you can adjust that by bringing this closer, narrowing this. Now you, you do lose some, some tones, but you can brighten up the image and you can make some adjustments. But if you have this really kind of lopsided uh, leaning of data in one direction or the other, if it's on the left side, and you can tell because uh, this uh, uh, dark dark icon, and that means it's it's uh, too too dark. Um, now there's a feature you can use called auto, which you know it's kind of controversial with uh, many people whether or not it's. <laughs> Photoshop even should have tools like that in it. 
Um, so um, uh, you can use the auto tool. Now that, that'll make some adjustments, but it could also alter your tones. Um, but that this is the tool. This is my favorite tool, and this is some of our customer service staff will will use this to check an image, uh, whether or not you know if, if they get feedback that a print is too dark, they'll check to see, hey, is it an issue with the file or is it with our hardware? Rarely is it. Now our hardware does you know. Uh, you know, errors happen with the hardware, it's hardware, but in most cases when there's a problem with an image, usually it's file related. And this is an example of, of what might, what can happen. So check your images, use this histogram tool. Notice if, if I open, come over here, let's go to this image, and I look at levels, you want something more like this where it's, it's either evenly distributed or even preferably where it kind of comes up and kind of then goes down. But you're hit, this, this image is a little brighter because of the, the, the dress and the background, so you're gonna have a lot of data there. Um, but if it, if, if it was all leaning over in this direction, let me darken this image and show, show you what happens. Um, actually, um, I'll just do this. So, darken that image. And I'm going to show you, notice how now you have a lot of data over here on the dark side. So uh, again, uh, I, I, I don't always use the tool, the level tool for editing, but it is, I, I like it mainly just to kind of review the, um, the, uh, the file, whether or not it's too dark or too bright. Um, and uh, then we'll go to uh, safe zones and, and bleed. We kind of talked about bleed, but let me talk about safe zones uh, real quick. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> I'm going to open up this file just because I think we're all tired of looking at that image. Um, okay. Okay. So uh, now I should have picked. Uh, picked an image with a signature on it and this doesn't but let's say this image does we're losing your mic a little bit there james right now we we just have kind of a static static yeah still static okay and now we kind of sounds like you went out okay there you are in my computer okay um all right so uh safe zones safe zones uh uh are the zone that you know that is going to be uh, it's going to show everything that you want in print um with uh, borderless printing you have to be more conscientious of it uh than you do with a print where we add a border a border externally because with a bordered print, we don't we don't have to, you know, slightly enlarge it to create that 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 bleed. We will crop it. Our software will crop it precisely to that eight by ten or that sixteen, whatever that that print size. Uh, you know, if if I or, you know, it'll, it'll crop it exactly to eight by 10 if I have a border. I will just select, wait, I just select that size. Oh, and notice that, uh, let me go back to that eight by 10 size. One of the things you, you'll notice is that, you, what well, you won't be able to notice technically is there is more than what looks to be more than a one inch border here, but there, there actually is a border stops probably about here and then your margin starts here. So just something to kind of be aware of. If you do choose a, a bordered print with a margin, then you're going to have a lot extra white space than you might have, uh, than you might have expected. But uh, going back to what I was saying, um, safe zones. Okay. Safe zones are important, especially if you were doing a, a uh, reproduction of a painting where there's a signature. 
Uh, a lot of times we see that a artist or a photographer will, and, and we're just about out of time, so I'm gonna go real quick here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll have their signature right at the very bottom, okay? Or they'll crop it so that their signature is right at the very bottom, and then they'll order a borderless print, or they'll put their print in a frame, and that frame lip will cover, you know, about a quarter, an eighth to a quarter of an inch. So their, their signature, which is already at the bottom, is only partially visible. So when it comes to safe zones, be aware. Give yourself, a, yeah, I say a, at least a quarter of an inch, but preferably about a half inch a space so so all your important contact content not contact okay is within kind of this you know half inch area quarter inch to half inch area um this way you won't have to worry about losing you know things like signatures or uh, other tops of people's head uh, due to the dimensions of the frame and the lip of the frame and the print size. So when you do your cropping of your image, as we crop this, okay, go back to that eight by 10, okay. I, I might be preserving the top of his head right here, but if I put this in a frame, chances are the lip of that frame is going to cover part of it. Or if there is a, or a signature here, some photographers put a digital signature that if they put it too close to the edge, that might get partially cut off. So a safe zone is just, it, it's more of a uh, being aware and you can just kind of click over here. You can drag these guys, create your own kind of safe zone. Uh, and uh, those, uh, those guides won't won't appear in your file when, when you send it to it. It's just something that Photoshop, uh, it's part of the Photoshop user interface. Um, but but you, as you can see, it's, it's, it's not quite right. So you probably want to, you know, make sure, oops. When you, when you crop, keep that in mind, okay? And uh, just because I don't want to keep anyone past their bedtime. <laughs> Uh, we'll go ahead and stop here, uh, but we will you both take a moment to see if there's any questions? Yeah, we had um, Stephen on our Zoom who asked, um, I told him about uh, if he doesn't select the color correction, basically nothing will be uh, adjusted on their order. But uh, he said also regarding color space, do we want to convert to your profile and embed it? No, no, no. Uh, excellent question. It's a mistake that a lot of, uh, and, people make, especially if they're doing soft proofing, is when they save the, uh, the file after the using our color profile uh, to review their image to soft proof, they will embed that, that color profile in their file. Don't do that because that, that just, that kind of like messes everything up. <laughs> uh, save it as that you know, with those adjustments, you, you use that color profile, that IC profile that you download for soft proofing. That's used so you can review and you can make changes and then save it without that embedded file because uh, you don't want to run the risk of uh, basically, our system's already converting your image to that profile and it's expecting an image to be in that in one of those common color spaces, those common RGB color spaces. Okay, and then we have, uh, Ernest would really like us to get to a question. Um, it, it's more on uh, my cold paper texture question. So let me go back up it to the top and, uh, and uh, ask and get David's question here. Uh, let's see. Dave Ernest. Okay, I think I might have put that on here. I think, um, okay, here it is. Can he uh, talk about, okay, it's, this goes on to digital illustrations. Um, 
okay, uh, on digital illustrations like a watercolor with digital paper texture, how do we print that on textured paper stocks? Well, uh, whenever you submit a, uh, an image, let, let me show you this picture that I had opened uh, initially. Um, because this has a texture. Um, if you zoom in, you can kind of see the texture of the original canvas that this mm -hmm. had been painted on. Um, that's going to show up. And what uh, the, the question is whether or not the texture of your, you know, the underlying texture of your paper uh, on top of the texture of, I mean. of the you're making your print to if it compounds it you know if it hurts it or not um uh most of the time i suggest you go with a smooth surface paper um if that texture of the original is is, is important to you um, sometimes when you add both together it, it becomes kind of too much so i i'd, I'd be a little conservative with your choices in that instance, uh, just because uh, I, I do know that uh, 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 you know when you're when you're dealing with both at the same time, it it it, it can hurt it. Um, I, I know with reproductions of like this painting, if if I would print this on paper, uh, you know I would want that original canvas surface to come through. To me, that would be more important than the texture of the print. Uh, somebody they're asking how bad does the texture of the canvas image go onto a canvas print? Well, it's going to depend upon uh, how that image is captured. If mm -hmm. it's if it's captured, uh, if if you're photographing that painting for your original initial file, and you you're angling your light source so that it's coming from a from a sharper sharp angle, then that the original canvas texture is going to be very pronounced. Um, if you have the light source hit it more straight on, it's going to be less pronounced. And uh, again, it's, you know, how pronounced you want, do you want that original uh, artwork, uh, the original texture to be? Um, again, if, if you want that to be very pronounced, uh, make sure you, you hit it with a, you know, a, a sharp angled light source, uh, otherwise hit it as straight on as possible. Um, and, and I do, I'm hoping that we, uh, my good friend, Jim Landers with Landers Photography, uh, in an upcoming Zoom meeting, he's going to, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, photographing artwork and it'll kind of go into a little bit more detail there. But again, I, I think if you, you're, you're probably okay if, uh, uh, printing it on canvas because our, our canvas typically is not as textured uh, or as coarsely textured as a uh, canvas that you would paint on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that that looks like a, looks like we got most of those questions in there. Did we get that all for you, Dave? I know you had something on the, um, when you were asking about that textured uh, piece, I've done watercolor prints on premium jaclay paper for the texture, and um, but I don't have a textured image in there, but it is captured with textured, um, and I haven't seen, personally on the, on the ones I've done, I, I haven't seen anything where it looks odd or I, it, yeah. it looks out beautifully. Really the only way you're gonna know for certain is kind of do like a small test print, you know, do like a little four by five, you know, crop out a four by five section of, of your painting and, and print a four by five print on the preferred media. Just kind of see how it comes out because different people are going to have, uh, you know, depend upon the artwork, the style of the artwork that, you know, how it was captured, you, you're going to, you might get different results. And uh, sometimes it may just be, it may be great and it may look fine. So, you know, and maybe to you it looks fine and to others it looks awful. So you kind of, yeah. it's really kind of gets a little subjective there. 
Yeah, if you get a, a chance, Dave, you can go look on uh, Geo Galleries. Um, I think we have the artist C. Ed Rivas is watercolors. Um, and those have been, it's because they're smaller, they're scanned in, they're captured, uh, scanned uh, through a scanner and, uh, and magnified. And so it does, when, it, when we have those printed on premium to clay paper, it really does give the impression, uh, and we've had them mistaken so far, that they are the actual original watercolors. So um, I, I hope that ha helps you as far as, uh, as the texture goes. If you're, if you're just scanning and you're not getting the texture, uh, I would probably not add it in your digital file and just send it as you captured it um, on, on premium clay paper and see that you might, you're more than likely gonna get a very true to what your original concept was um, of your original piece. Let's, let's let's kind of stop with one last question and then any questions after this maybe they can email you and then we can uh, uh, we have somebody asking what kind of monitors uh do we use all over the place uh, i don't know <laughs> at, the, at the printing station it's whatever yeah, it, yeah. It's, yeah it, i uh but I, I can tell you some of the the better monitors are the nec monitors uh any yeah nec um uh our, uh, our, our our printer technicians are not doing a whole lot of soft proofing. Uh, they, again, we're just dealing with too many files. We're relying on our hardware to be dialed in correctly. Uh, and we, we, we use, we do, uh, I'm not sure which brand it is, but uh, we do check that on a regular basis uh, on several monitors, several screens, depending upon the, the, the print process, the, the, the type of uh, hardware that the uh, that system is driving. But um, if, if you want recommendations for the monitors, uh, look at one of the high-end NEC monitors. Uh, they, they, they can be pretty pricey, um, but uh, NEC makes the best. Your laptop, I, I'm looking, I'm, I'm on a Surface, Microsoft Surface. The screen looks incredible. Thank you. But, doesn't print well. And I'm, you know, across the room, I'm looking at an, an, an awesome HP monitor, and I think it's pretty pricey. Um, but uh, I can't soft proof it. it. The soft proof just is is totally off, and I can't adjust it <laughs> for the life of me, no matter how well I calibrate it. So um, I just know NEC is a good one. L let's go ahead and uh, can we stop there? Or yeah. You, um well, guys, um, I, you know, thank you again for everybody attending on our Zoom meeting and on, on Facebook. Uh, we are going to be moving um, our uh, Tuesday chats to the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, so, uh, you know, check your newsletter to get the Zoom link uh, with the meeting ID and password. Uh, uh, we'll go ahead and send you out what we're going to have next. Um, if you're interested in geo galleries, you can go to our YouTube. Um, we will have um, some of our previous um, Zoom meetings up on there. Uh, this one will be up within the week up there as well. Uh, we also keep them on our Facebook as a post, uh, so you can kind of go back and see this. And if you have any questions, uh, you can kind of send them uh, probably over to me at Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A, at finerworks.com. And um, if you have questions that we did not get here, I'll go ahead and get with James and we'll try to add those to our final edit that'll be on YouTube. So thanks again, um, everybody, and uh, have a great evening. And uh, thank you for being customers. We appreciate it. Yes, we certainly do. Y'all have a good night. Mm -hmm.